Hi, it's Katrina. From long-lost Aztec artifacts that seem to depict extraterrestrials to mysterious doorways leaking toxic vapors, here are nine mysterious ancient artifacts that can't be explained. But I'm sure going to try. After all, it is Origins Explained. Number 9. Vitrified Forts in the 18th century, an official survey in the Scottish Highlands uncovered an ancient Iron Age fortress. While there are many fortresses in Scotland and in Europe, this fort was different. This fort was made of stones that had somehow fused together. The walls of this fort must have been exposed to extreme temperatures that caused partial melting of the stonework. This process made the rock walls turn to glass in a process known as vitrification. The fort is called Dundeerdale and was built around 500 BC, when in theory humans lacked the technology to heat stone walls to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Initially after the discovery, people believed that perhaps the fort was built on the remains of an ancient volcano which had heated it. But there are actually many more forts like this, not only in Scotland but all over Europe. Dundeerdale is just one of 70 vitrified forts in Scotland and 200 vitrified forts throughout Europe. Conspiracy theorists suggested that an ancient superweapon we don't know about yet must have melted the stones. Scientists thought for a long time that some sort of destructive activity like warfare melted the rocks, but there was no evidence as to how. Some researchers speculated that the vitrification was some sort of ritual. Finally, in 2016, after 200 years of speculation, three volcanologists finally chimed in to try to help solve the mystery. They placed some rock samples in a box furnace mimicking Iron Age technology. The scorching heat weakened individual stones, but strengthened the overall structure by turning the mortar holding the rocks together into a dense, glass-like substance. It is still unclear why people in the Iron Age did this to their forts, or how they came up with this method. More experiments are necessary to fully understand their vitrification practices and why they would do this all over Europe. Leave your theories in the comments below! Number 8 underground rooms. Earlier in 2020, Israeli archaeologists discovered a complex of rooms that were located underneath the Western Wall Plaza in Jerusalem. These rooms were literally carved into the bedrock under the plaza. What's more, archaeologists have no idea what these rooms might have been used for, but their placement is certainly evocative. They are a mere 120 feet away from the Temple Mount, which is a holy location for both Jews and Muslims. Given how iconic this location is, how did archaeologists miss it for so many years? Well, apparently this complex has been located beneath a white mosaic floor of a large Byzantine building for the past 1,400 years or so. The complex is made up of two separate rooms connected by a courtyard and staircases, all of which are carved into the bedrock. There are also storage spaces and niches cut into the rock serving as storage space and shelving. Archaeologists also found a number of artifacts there, such as clay cookware, remnants of oil lamps, and a ritualistic water basin. Some of the objects date back to around 2,000 years old. This new complex is one of the only remaining signs of ancient Jerusalem left standing after the Romans destroyed much of the city. But why did they build this structure? It would have taken a lot of work to carve out this much stone. Researchers aren't sure if it was a house or a storage unit, whether it was a religious or a civil building, or why its creators would have spent such a large effort in making the space. Archaeologists are hoping that they will find out more about the Byzantine building and more subterranean rooms in the future that will help solve the puzzle. Number 7. 3,200-year-old sword On the island of Mallorca off the coast of Spain, archaeologists recently uncovered something astonishing, an ancient giant sword that is nearly completely intact. They found this sword in the Talayot del Serral de Ses Abel's archaeological site, which is located in Piuge Punyent, Mallorca. This location contains a lot of big stone structures called talayots, all of which are estimated to be somewhere between 3,000 to 8,000 years old. These structures give us much insight into the ancient cultures that lived there. This site was first discovered in 1950, but this sword discovery was only recently found in 2019. The sword itself is thought to have been left there around 1200 BC. That only makes it even more astonishing that the artifact is in such good shape. Archaeologists haven't found many weapons at the site, far less any weapons from that time period. 
Over the coming years, researchers are hoping it will help us understand what the Bronze Age was like in that region. Astonishingly, the team that uncovered the sword were digging in a place that had already been picked over before. They weren't looking for anything new, but were just hoping to build a museum on the spot where they found it. As usual with archaeologists, there is some disagreement as to why this sword was left at the site. Could it have been a religious offering? Maybe. Or maybe the Talayots were meant to defend their land, and the sword is a sign of strength. In any case, be on the lookout for more info about this fascinating place. Number 6. The Drapanosaurus the Drapanosaurus is quite the enigma. The first fossil was found in Italy, but it was all crushed and had to be reconstructed. Scientists believed it was an extinct reptile, but that's now been thrown into doubt. A second fossil was found in Ghost Ranch, New Mexico, and this one seemed to have a claw on each hand instead of fingers. It's now thought that rather than being a dinosaur or a reptile, it was in its own category of creature. Its giant front claw was connected to a flat bone that is seen in no other known animal. It also had a slender snout, a long muscular tail, and a tail spike that allowed it to hold onto trees. In fact, what was once thought to be a reptile actually resembled a mammal, more specifically, the anteater. The problem with this is that evolution dictates that animals are constantly changing, and fossils show the pathway towards the animals we see today. This fossil is so similar to something that exists today that it almost seems impossible. Some have suggested that the two species evolved independently from one another, which could explain this, but others have suggested it calls the whole idea of evolution into question. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Looks like we need to find more specimens to find the answer. Number 5. New Hominin Species Scientists think that they may have uncovered the existence of a previously undiscovered hominin species that they're dubbing Homo luzonensis. However, if they're right, that evolutionary biologists are seriously going to need to rethink the evolution of humanity. These scientists discovered this new fossil inside of a cave in the Philippines. But if this is indeed a new hominin species, then there might have been human-like species in Asia prior to the departure of our more well-known relatives in Africa. Based on the remains found, including some teeth and finger fossils, this new species of hominin was probably around 4 feet high. Even though it was tinier than Homo sapiens, it shared a number of other similarities with us. For instance, it has the same kind of molar tooth. There is also evidence which seems to indicate that Homo luzonensis evolved from Homo erectus, which is another precursor to humanity. How does this bring our current picture of human evolution into doubt? Well, it's mostly thought that hominins migrated to Asia from Africa in two separate waves. The first wave was Homo erectus, the second wave was Homo sapiens. Scientists used to think the Homo erectus was the only hominin on the block in Asia before sapiens arrived. But if Homo luzonensis was there too, then we need a different picture. Scientists aren't yet positive about this, but it's definitely going to be a topic of discussion over the coming years. Number 4. Aztec Alien Artifacts A few years back, a group of researchers claimed to uncover a treasure trove of Aztec archaeological artifacts that seemed to depict images of aliens. The Aztec culture has lent itself to many impressive archaeological finds over the years. We've uncovered some of their tombs, their temples, and their death whistles, among many other things. But if these new artifacts are legitimate, then it is not only interesting from an archaeological standpoint, but from an extraterrestrial one as well. There were supposedly around 400 artifacts uncovered. They haven't been dated, but sources say that the shine they display is emblematic of a way that the Aztecs sealed their rocks. But more impressive than their constitution are the figures that they depict. Many of these stones seem to display the images of flying saucers and angelic alien-like figures that the human figures are apparently worshipping. Some of these artifacts are literally in the shape of the classic UFO, and one of them even has a tiny alien-like figure in its center. There are also stone helmets that are in the shape of alien heads. Now, these recent artifacts do not appear to have been verified by any archaeological authority, but they haven't conclusively said that they aren't real either. Hopefully, in the coming years, we can find out further information about the circumstances of this discovery and where the objects came from. Number 3. Oseberg Ship A humble Norwegian farmer came upon a remarkable archaeological find completely by accident in 1903. He discovered a totally intact Viking ship, which also housed human remains and a huge amount of treasure. Over the years, this ship became referred to as the Oseberg ship. While it isn't the largest ship, it's around 65 feet long, but it is crazy that an artifact this immense wasn't discovered for so long, and even then, wholly by accident. 
The treasure inside of the ship was also remarkable in its own right. For one thing, it contained the now famous Buddha bucket artifact, which has caused controversy in the archaeological community. The existence of this Buddha figurine suggests that the Vikings had interactions with Asian communities at the time, which would mean that their reign was far wider than we might have previously imagined. The circumstances of the discovery were also astounding. The ship itself was completely covered by dirt, which despite the dampness of the soil, actually helped to preserve it in almost pristine condition. It was so well preserved that all of the drawings on the stern and bow of the Osseberg are even still visible after several centuries. In fact, you can go see this ship for yourself at the Viking Ship Museum in Oslo. Number 2. The Long Yu Grottoes The Long Yu Grottoes are a series of underground structures near the village of Xi'an Beikun in the Zhejiang province in China. They are thought to be at least 2,000 years old, but scientists and researchers have no idea how they were built, what they were used for, or even who was responsible for them. They were originally discovered in 1992, with a total of 36 grottos covering an area of 30,000 square meters. Each one is carved almost 100 feet into solid siltstone and contains features such as rooms, gutters, and pools. As well as the question of construction, it's also peculiar how they were so precisely carved and why they remain in such good condition. The grottos have been flooded for centuries until the government drained a lot of them so they could be further explored. They are proof that there was an advanced civilization in the region at one time, even though none have been documented. It seems every time researchers uncover new things, they also find more questions that science is unable to explain. Yet. Number 1. Pluto's Gate Pluto's Gate has been referred to as the Gate to Hell, and for good reason. The gate itself, located in Denizli Merkez, Turkey, still emits a plume of toxic gas. To this day, if animals get too close, they meet a tragic fate. Its purpose is altogether mysterious. Why is this air so toxic, and what was it used for? Well, as it turns out, the air is almost 53% CO2, and we also know that this site was once used in a ritualistic way to pay respects to the gods of whatever is down below. As crazy as this archaeological site is, it's strange to think that it wasn't discovered until 2013, after its location was traced to a thermal spring. Experts immediately started thinking about the supposed temple to the underworld that they'd read about going off the map somewhere around 500 AD. And strangely enough, Pluto's gate seemed to match this description to a T. Poets of the time had written about a strange place where anything that entered died inside. Pluto's gate was run by shaman-like figures who inhaled so much of the gas that they were apparently immune to it. They were probably constantly tripping. At that time, you could buy tiny animals and throw them into the gate, only to see them die and petrify inside. Sometimes these priests would bring bulls inside and then pull back their corpses. Since their noses were closer to the ground, the bulls would die, whereas the shamans would survive. Thanks for watching! Do you have any theories about these ancient artifacts or places? Tell me the scoop down below! Also, while you're there, be sure to like this video and click that notification bell to stay updated on all of the newest videos from Origins Explained! See you soon! Bye!